Jason, Rosemary, Duncan, myself, Shane, Tim, and Tom. Tim and Tom. So, Jason's by Rosemary. Okay. Yep. Cool. He's just barely out of the screen. Yeah, I think it's on. Okay, so are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda as presented? Uh, Tom. Can we have uh, an addition to the agenda for executive session for employee evaluation? So, Tom, this agenda is the one that was posted, not the one you sent that added the... Correct. Yeah, that's why I made that note in the email. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted people to know it was going to come, but I felt like the right way to handle that situation. Okay. Uh, I do have one other item that I think should be an added agenda item, and it's an update on some information that was received around old mill house. Sorry, milk house at Old Mill Park area. Um, so we'll add that under, um, so it's as a, <coughs> before number eight. And what, what's the topic again, Beth? The milk house. have been sent out not yet no. okay and um, we received a few donations after the flood um, and I believe we had asked for some letters some thank you letters to be sent to those folks um, were those sent out I don't know if Susan did that or not okay, I don't know I did not. okay. Um, yeah I just wanted to follow up on those things and make sure was, we're getting done so thank you Any other issues or concerns? I have one, um, yep. and it's kind of rolled up into budget uh, issues, et cetera. But a, a while ago, Rosemary provided us with a year-end um, report regarding the surplus. And I think this board should actually take an action to approve the um, assignments that we had put in the budget for proposed reservations 
um, and actually formally um, ask or instruct Rosemary to move those proposed reservations into uh, the, the reserve funds that we had proposed them to be in. And I, I, I believe she handed out that spreadsheet, but I don't think we ever took any formal action to approve those, formally approve and move those reserved amounts into those funds. Are you talking about last year's surplus budgeted? June of 23. June 30, 2023. You also need to decide what you want to do with the economic money that you... The 40K so like before, that was raised. Did not use right. Yeah. Last year. And I was going to send you out, uh, I think, tomorrow to, so you could put it on your next board meeting agenda. So that would that would be my suggestion is that we have that as an action item at our very next board meeting to approve, um, you know, approve the uh, proposed expenditures and deal with the forty thousand issue, um, whether we treat it as general surplus or I don't know what else we would do with it. I mean, it seems to me that it was raised by taxes, but I guess my point is we should. I'd like to see that as an action item. Yeah. Either give it back to the voters or reserve that Right. Yep. Typically, you do that in the September meeting, and I'm positive you didn't do it in September. Yeah. Because you're busy with Yeah. What did you say, Ruth Mary? Typically, you do, you do it in the September meeting, and I'm sure you had other items to deal with in the September meeting. Okay, we need to add that to the annual calendar. <clears throat> it's definitely not there. Okay. Um, I do have one item for the corporate EPC grant, and that is that the well, the EPA grant was submitted. Um, it wasn't accepted, and there's additional work happening. Um, to provide, there's basically a list uh, to the board. So there's a list of items that um, Randall and Tori from FCPC are following up on. Um, none of them are of significant concern, but they are leading to more work around um, the submission of that, the acceptance of our submission. Um, so there will be more updates on that next week, next um, board meeting. And by the way, the next board meeting, um, Randall has put a few topics for the board meeting <clears throat> around economic development items that are happening and ongoing. So we can look forward to that. Uh, okay, any other issues or concerns? Do. Um, I do have one thing since it will come up in budgeting and it's going to share. I did get confirmation about the ANR pilot money. I shared with you, the board, that confirmation that it is expected to be budgeted. Um, I did not get confirmation, however, of the building pilot money, um, which is significantly more. I have followed up. Um, the only thing I've heard back is that the uh, legislation is expected to be the governor's report tomorrow. Um, but I haven't heard anything of confirmation on that building pilot money, which is you know four hundred thousand plus. So, Tim, is that as, as loud as it will go? That is as loud as it will go. Okay. So that um, that came through and has already been resolved. Um, it was less than a thousand dollars, but it was put on in case it needed to be. Um, but Rosemary, I think, I already handled that with me. So that's that's been put to bed and resolved. My only question about basketball or jersey printing is: 
it is the middle of the basketball season. I don't understand why these do not jersey anything right now. Um, but this is for what it's for. Okay. Um, treasurer and clerk's report. Updated financials, anything warrants, licenses, or any, any other items, Rosemary? I do have a tobacco license for Charismatic LLC, which is the um, get get here or get get yours get yours, <laughs> get yours now. And now licenses go on a twelve month revolving cycle, so they all don't come due at once. <coughs> so we're getting these two <coughs> And they were one of the first ones that did it last year. So that one is just tobacco? Yes. And all we need is approval. We don't need signatures because you do it online, correct? Correct. Motion to approve tobacco renewal license for Charismatic mm -hmm. LLC. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Okay, and I handed out the board the latest uh, budget status report. To date, we are at... This is six six full periods, half, half a year? Yes. 41% spent a budget. And income is at 93%. And in April, we'll receive the um, school true up, so that will adjust the current taxes. And I have a feeling we're going to fall short on the, um, the clerk and office fees. Recordings have gone down significantly. Uh -huh. Here's you that we're going to fall short on what was The clerk and the rec recording of land records. One of the big reasons is the uh, there's not a lot of refinancing going on with the interest rates is high in there. Has access to the office influenced that as well, do you think? I don't or? think so. When somebody calls, we can do it online. Because yeah. we're only at 34% so far this year. So is that something you propose to adjust under under the proposed budget, too? I think when I went through, I did lower it a little bit. So would that be under clerk office fees? Yes. Okay. And do you think we won't hit the target of 28000 so should we adjust the estimated final downwards as well? Yes. You got a suggestion for what that number ought to be? Oh, probably 22000 I know it's not going the right way, but... Definitely wrong. Well, I'd rather have it. I'd rather know about it and be able to plan for it. So you're still proposing 25 for next year? Yeah, but that's down from 28. Rates are starting to come down a little bit. <coughs> <Not quite. coughs> so do you think, you think 25 is... A reasonable number for the proposed? Yeah, I think so. But otherwise, your, you know, our budget status report actually looks pretty good. All things considered. All things considered. <laughs> yeah. Except for the 53 7. It's not included in the list. The, the flooding. Right. Yeah. Right. Which it probably shouldn't be. I mean, no. I think no. having that separately accounted for is just fine. Their thoughts will get a lot bigger. You know, yeah. Tomorrow is the meeting with the contractors for the municipal building and the library for the ARP. For the mitigation efforts and it's going to be interesting to see when those come back what the prices are going to be and 
and timelines to see that's the other thing is it might not start until next fiscal year too. Yeah. How much more work is going to be done downstairs before we start allowing people upstairs? I think they're all done today. They're done today, but I know the floor needs a good clean. This so tracks off everything upstairs. Maybe we could call um, the people who clean on the weekends and see even if it's worth an additional fee. Have him send a separate invoice to just, um, or have Brian see if he'll do a shop back. I think it needs more than a shop back. Got it. So at this point, there's no new rugs down. It's just it's just what's left of the Cement, concrete. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Not. But shop the, back doesn't get all that dust and stuff up. The vault space is secured, and all risk, you know, loose nails and broken boards have been removed and covered. So the vault space and public safety have been addressed. So with the I know intent. We're off topic. Are we off topic? Uh, it's under Rosemary's report, and she's asking a question about when the municipal bond will be reopened. About the municipal bond? No, about when the municipal office will be reopened. Uh, 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 I think that's. Okay. And Rosemary, that's related flooding expense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the sooner the better. Right? Wrong or indifferent? Your comment, Tom, about a separate invoice would be that it would be attributable to flood related. We put it right into this. Uh, I think it would probably fall under the emergency preparedness to get, get the building back to use. Yep. Um, but yeah, so if we could have a separate invoice for, these, for that vacuuming or cleaning or. Then you could code that. 4207 yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we can figure it out tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Do you have any questions for Rosemary Beth? Uh, no, I just have a general statement. Um, I think that the standard form that you guys have, right? As far as the... When you post the roads. The road posting? Yeah, the road posters are a standard poster that goes up. But... Okay, you're talking about the poster, but the limit on the poster. Yeah, it's a standard poster that uh, we get from the state that has the weights with the number of axles per vehicle. But we have to set, the select board has to set the weight limits by road. Maybe. I'm just saying all the posters that has ever been put up are all the same posters. They all have the same weight limit. Like, for example, uh, I think it's a three axle vehicle, three or four axle, four axle. I think two for the truck, two for the trailer is 21,000. And then a truck, a two axle truck is 12,000. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that at all, but, but we we end up with a chart of all the highways and what the posted limit is, which translates to that. Are we going to enforce is the big thing, I guess, because, I mean, there's trucks that are 80,000 pounds running on these roads. That's a tough one. And but Enforcement is tough because... Enforcement is tough. You've got one entity that can do enforcement and the sheriff doesn't say the dmv when we were told in 
one of the trainings I went to is the DMV is the technical, the only ones that can do the enforcement. So we have to hold the truck there or vehicle until the DMV gets there to weigh them up. And then as far as like certain things are kind of exempt to a degree, like agricultural are exempt for the most part. Like they can do the damage to the road, but we can hold them liable if we go back on them and get them weighed up. We can make them pay to fix the road. So that's what they said in the class, whether or not the board chooses to go that route, I guess. So I think that um, in terms of the responsibility of the select board, it's our responsibility to make sure we're setting those limits so that if we choose to enforce them at any time, we have the limits in place. So if we already know what those limits are by road, it sounds like we do. Um, we don't. Is there any reason that the limit would, should be different for any road? Beth, Beth, the Jason is correct in saying that the state sets what the axle weights are, but okay. we have to actually set on an annual basis the roads that will be posted and what the weight limits will be. I suggest that this isn't ready for prime time. It isn't ready for a vote tonight. We should at our next meeting or, or some future meeting get a listing of each road Brian should have that. I mean, that should be somewhere yeah. in the mm -hmm. files. <clears throat> Seems like one thing we could do tonight is have the conceptual debate. Do you want to post and enforce, or do you want not want to post at all? Or, And if you're posting and enforcing, is there going to be a communication with DMV? And is there going to be holding agriculture, in this case, 90% sugar makers responsible for damage? You know, these are like big questions and we're a town full of agricultural people and just like making sure that like the ramifications are fully understood of like what posting may mean. Um, I personally think that's a bigger discussion and yeah. I think so too. If we don't if we don't post them, then it's unenforceable. Correct. So I would my take would be we should post them and then we can have a tech global discussion about what we're going to try and do to enforce. Would, would so that... in terms of posting them and determining which roads are eligible for posting, it seems to me, and I could just be not knowing what I'm talking about, but it seems to me that any dirt road, whether it is a class four dirt road, a class three dirt road, um, I don't think we have top twos, but road three is. or four, yeah. uh, any dirt road gets the posting, so could we be as generic as that? No, I don't think so. You can actually do as much <laughs> or more damage to a paved road during mud season um, by having overweight vehicles on it as you can a dirt road. And in fact, dirt roads is are easier to fix. Between, is there a difference in those limits between a paved and a dirt well, I think that that goes to the question of what we decide, what the weight limits are that we decide to post on those roads. Like Railroad Street can handle significantly more weight with because it has the base behind it, but like Crabtree can't. And so that's why the select board has to make those decisions on a road by road basis as opposed to making it on a surface type basis. And okay, next question. I don't want to talk about it on a road by road basis personally. Um, everyone else can disagree with me, but I would like to delegate this to the road, the public works supervisor, and our town. Uh, what are you, Evan? Administrator? <laughs> no, you're not. Road foreman. No. Road foreman. Road commissioner. Road commissioner. Road commissioner. Wait, wait. <laughs> yes, road commissioner. I think we should delegate to the road commissioner and to the public works. I can't see her face, but I think she's smiling. I no, I'm serious. I am dead serious. Like I don't understand why we would take our time in a meeting talking about this when my guess is it's pretty cut and dry. Like it's actually a complicated process, and the enforcement is the biggest part because uh, um, Waterman Road, for example, uh, so the road is rated for pretty high, but the bridge is only rated for sixteen thousand pounds, and I talk to Steve Smith and stuff. It, it's never been enforced. I mean, fuel trucks, school buses, everything go across that bridge. 
The only people that are exempt are municipalities. So we're exempt from weight limits. Morrisville, Waterville, anybody. So they can come to Johnson, we can go to Morrisville. If we have to go across the bridge, we're exempt. But we don't enforce anything. So setting the weights is pointless unless we're gonna do enforcement. I can reach out again. Two years ago, I had contact with DMV about uh, enforcement and it fell into the proverbial staffing issue pretty much. Yeah. Um, I, whatever works for you, Beth, if you, if the, if the board wants to do that, we can move on to the next item. Um, I would be very happy to have um, Evan and Jason review that and come back to the board with a recommendation because at the end of the day I think the select board has to set the weight limits. Yeah, I would come back to the board for yeah. approval. Right. So I, I'm totally comfortable with the idea of delegating to you guys the, you know, coming back with a proposal. Have they been posted in the past? Yes. Every yeah. year. Yeah. Always. Then I, yeah, I see no reason why. Even if it doesn't get enforced, keeping the ability open for it to be enforced, um, as unfortunate as it is that it will probably lead to selective enforcement, you know, uh, yeah, it should happen. <clears throat> All right, uh, we got homework to do. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah, sounds great. Next item is yours, Beth? Next item is by the uh, I thought you said you wanted to throw Millhouse oh, yeah. in before. Sorry. Yes, I did. Um, <coughs> okay, yeah, I did. Millhouse update. Um, so I got a call and talk has more about some of this too, but basically what I want to share is I got a call about Millhouse servicing the um, furnace and that county oil is not service the furnace. Um, I'm sorry, Beth, can you make sure you're speaking into your mic? Yeah, we can't hear you. I, I can hear you well, Beth. All right, sorry, we just, you got very quiet for us in the room here. Okay, I'm not sure why. Maybe there was other noise that was cutting out, I'm not sure. Um, long story short, Tom, I didn't connect with you. Did did you connect with Fred on that furnace in the old millhouse? No, I haven't yet. I kind of wanted to have a okay. bigger. Let's. When we talked tonight about the budget, there was a item that I wanted to ask the boards their opinion about before the fix versus replace, and you know the option is what's the best for that solution. Okay. Ultimately, the bottom line is we all know the old millhouse needs lots of work. Um, but very specifically, the chimney needs to be replaced, and there was other feedback from County Oil too. Tom and I talked about that with our feedback. The big topic is chimney, and something will need to be done with the chimney. I'm bringing that up as informational right now because I think that when we think about all of the buildings that we have issues with, we need to think about prioritizing all of the issues. So Tom's working to compile um, details about each about each building, what the issue is, and what the urgency of each of those issues is so that we can actually look at things comprehensively and make decisions about money and spend comprehensively. But ultimately, you, I just want to be really clear that the chimney replacement is a topic that needs to be part of that list. Um, that's one topic. The second topic is about Mill House is that the food shelf is using the office space in the mill house. Um, I cannot recollect, although I feel like maybe we, have, we did this, um, but I, I feel like the food shelf may have access at one point if they could use that space and following our joint meeting with the village saying the village didn't want to use the building at all. Um, could be wrong in both of those things. Uh, this is just me, fuzzy memory, me speaking. Uh, but moving on to current day B and uh, real time, um, Ken reached out 
and Toronto reached out and said that they're about to start, they're going to start work on the village garage very, garage very soon. And because that work will begin, they will need space. Right now they're using um, office space in that building, it sounds like, um, to some degree, maybe not a lot, but some. And they're looking to reutilize or ha at least have available the mill house office if and when it's needed. Um, so this is an item that I think we need to make a decision on and we need to be like determine what next steps are in terms of um, that office use or potentially an alternative. I mean, I think that all things are on the table, um, but I wanted to make sure that I was bringing it here because if we're going to ask the food shelf to move out of that space, I want, I think it should be a forward ask as opposed, as opposed to individual. So Beth, did, are you saying that you think that we authorize the, the food shelf to occupy the, the, the space that the village was using as an office at some point in time? Right now, Duncan, what I know is that um, we had that joint conversation with the village trustees a while back, and we left that conversation with the trustees last spring, I think where they wanted us to take responsibility for the building and they weren't using the office, office space anyway. That I feel clear about. And given that, I think it is possible that the food shelf asks to utilize the space and we told them okay. I don't know if that happened. I don't remember it, but I could see it as a possibility. Um, but the bottom line is they are using it right now? Oh, yeah, the bottom line is they're using it now, yeah. Interesting. I don't, I don't ever remember authorizing them to occupy that space. But I don't either. That's just me. Well, well I don't either, but there's a lot of things I don't remember, you know? Well, my memory's sharp, though. I was bad. I was not on the board, so. I was down there last week delivering something or another, and it doesn't seem like a huge ask for them to move out of that space. They have a crazy camp and stuff there. We can, we can go down and ask them. Okay. I, I don't recall us giving, specifically giving them permission, and I think they were pretty, from what I know, they were pretty clear that it had been Nate's office. Sort of. Yeah. I don't even know how they got the key. <laughs> I think Nate gave yeah. him the key. Yeah. Nate gave him the key. <laughs> okay. It, it, it seems in the end, we, we can ask, we can just inform them that they can't use that room and they'll have to move that food out of there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm good with it. Everybody else is good with it. Yeah. <coughs> Sounds like a plan. Yeah. I, I mean, it is what it is. They need it. Their space. We have to. Um, Tom, do you mind following up? Yeah, I can easily do that. Thank you. Can I ask a clarifying question about the food shelf? Are they a town entity or are they a nonprofit who uses a town space? Thanks, Rosemary. The latter. <laughs> okay. They are totally separate from the they're a nonprofit who uses the space. And they're they're not even associated with a with a county or regional organization, are they? Aren't they just their own entity? I, I honestly don't know. It's, are they not an entity at all? Are they just like a group of folks? Well, we're not going to answer that now, so let's keep moving. But good question. Well, it is apropos of their use of the space. Yeah. Certainly a large question for another day. <laughs> um, okay. So moving on to the administrative report, highway expense, outstanding decisions for the board. Um, do you want to take this one? Yeah. Um, so the budget now is uh, I've been trying to clean up estimated final, and the year-to-date numbers were updated uh, just prior to the meeting. Um, I went through and I highlighted everything in yellow. That's uh, outstanding board decision and then 
there's like an attached document each of you have um, that has, they're all questioned and it corresponds in um, linear order to how you read the budget. Um, I'm not, so we could go through those questions and then finish with highway um, since it's at the end. Does that work for you, Beth? So the first question is um, the revenue highway restricted fund, other, other, other revenue number one. Uh, do you guys want to buy the backo in fiscal year 24? Uh, do you want to budget for it in fiscal year 25 or not at all? Um, and would you consider buying a pickup that would, instead of the backo, that would handle all five highway members? Um, so that way they don't have to take a uh, tandem axle and two town trucks um, to trainings. And, a, and the other option is an excavator versus a backhoe, pluses and minus. And so, uh, Jason, do you want to kind of take the floor on that and maybe bring the board up to speed what you're thinking? As far as the, <clears throat> the backhoe replacement, I talked to... The salesman, I talked to the one of the techs down there, told him what we had on it for hours, told him what we'd be using it for from here on out, both the town and the village, and roughly what we'd be putting on it a year for hours. And he said that the trade-in price wouldn't fall much below what it is now within, you know, as the older it gets, as long as it stays in the shape that we keep it. Because it's already to the age where... It's reached a, you know, almost a plateau for a while. As far what as the, that cost? what is that price? As far as the trade-in, well, we, yeah. we weren't. I never got the trade-in price versus the, the excavator because the village didn't want to go into the excavator, and they wanted to keep the backo, and it was budgeted, I believe, a while back at forty some odd thousand as the what the uh, revenue would be on trading it is what was in the budget a couple years ago when this was talked about. Do you think that's accurate? Do you think it's like rough ballpark? I think it might go for a little bit more. <laughs> Wait, the tobacco? Yeah. It was in for 40000 last year, but yeah. in the reworking, it got up to 80000 Or, no, is that salvage or last invoice? I guess that's last invoice. It sounds like it won't be 80000 So now... I don't think it'll be eighty thousand. I don't know what. But um, Brian did. Well, it could be more than forty. You're saying now it's yeah. in there for salvage of sixteen thousand. Sorry, I was in the wrong. Right. I was in the wrong column. And yeah. it, it was the backhoe that you recently got some parts to all repair, the, right? Yeah, yeah, we did all the pins and bushings in the rear of it, and like the grader, I did some research online uh, when we put it up for sale just to see what they were going for. I've done the same thing with the backhoe, and they're asking. Around forty thousand to a little bit more for this backhoe, uh, in a you know more used shape. You know, pins and bushings are worn out and stuff. So, like he said, as long as we, you know, do what we do and keep it nice, like we do with all of our stuff, it's not really going to change its trade-in value over the next five plus years. Jason, can I ask you? When we, when we went through this exercise last whenever it was. And by the way, we had some pretty wrong numbers in the replacement cost. So we went through and tried to update those replacement cost numbers. And I wanted to say, I'm not 100% confident they're 100%. But um, <clears throat> for the back of the last invoice was at 80,000, but the replacement cost was 173,000. And we expected the salvage cost to be 16,000. Um, meaning the net cost would be one hundred and fifty-seven thousand. Yeah, the the replacement cost for the backhoe that we have in our current um, job is one hundred and seventy-three thousand, give or take now, because it's been um, probably ten months since I had it quoted uh, from Cat, and the John Deere one was a little bit more. I don't have the number in front of me. But. So the John Deere loader? No, the John Deere, because I got the cat backhoe and I had John Deere quote 
the same tobacco, so we had comparison numbers. I, I know that we did this last year, and I can only hope that we can follow up on it this year, but my take is we need to do a redo on the entire capital budget and plan um, and deal with the questions of the five passenger pickup, um, the backhoe versus not. Uh, in other words, I think we need to update the capital budget and spreadsheet, excavator or not. My, my question to you is the, the one that's in here right now doesn't have us replacing it in the current year. It doesn't have us replacing the backhoe next year. It does have us replacing it in 26-27. I guess where we left it until we got confirmation from the board of what their yeah. ideas so are. are you are you re if if we go if we go through this and update our capital budget and plan, does that work for you if we leave it like this for now? Yeah, we have, I have no problem with, and I talked to Nate, with pushing it back because it's in good shape. And we don't, the goal going forward, if we don't purchase an excavator, which is fine by me, but we, well, with, with, <clears throat> excuse me, with us renting them, it works just as well. We rent it for the time we use it, we have it, we can write half of it off for the grants that we're doing. So it works, that works just as well for us. And then we're not having to do any maintenance or any wear and tear, any, anything like that, it's all all done for us. We, we don't have to do any of it. Okay. So I don't have a problem with keeping it that way, and I've talked to some other. The tobacco is probably your second most important. Yes. Because, you know, your loader has to start every day, every yeah. all winter, and if the loader doesn't start, your tobacco is all you have. Yeah. That's the only way you're ever going to get sand on the road. So it, yeah. it needs to be, and then the one you have is going to make it, you think is in good enough shape to be a backup? Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the tech said that if well, as long as we keep obviously the pins and bushings good in it and don't let things go to the stage where we have to do line boring and stuff, which is costly, uh, <coughs> with the amount of hours that we're going to be putting on it now, because right now it's got 4,000 hours, and oh, this year we put just over 100 hours on hours. it. Yeah, we put just over 100 hours on it. Yeah. This year, because we had we used the back wall also, or the excavator also. Yeah, so, and the village is using it a lot less. Yeah, than they used. they're not using it nowhere near as much as they were because they a couple times they had a company come in and help out with their excavator when we did it. But well, once the village redid the water lines, yeah. you know their usage went way down. Yeah, that's why Nate was good with us pushing it off for a while too because it is like a Swiss army knife I mean it's good for, it's good to have and that's one of the reasons that we didn't both sides really didn't want to get rid of it we wanted to keep it and get an excavator was the fact that it's so versatile like in the middle of the night if we need to drive it across town we don't have to do anything but drive it across yeah. town but it's basically in pretty good shape it is in great shape yes there's nothing mechanically wrong with it yeah. okay so I think we answered number one 26-27 budget year is. Yeah, as far as the pickup there for now, I would like to just, it would be so much handier for us to have a five-person truck again with the five, like we used to have, only because no one wants to use our personal vehicle to go to classes because the employees were put in a spot where they were told that they didn't, um, couldn't have passengers on the weekends, so they said they didn't want to have town employees in their vehicles. So that makes it so we have to involve a tandem and the low pro and the 3500 Ram because they're all two seater trucks, except for the well, even the tandem is, but there's five. So. Which which truck would that replace? The 3500 Ram, the one that we bought in 2020. Yeah. Yeah, so isn't that the one that is up for replacement in 25, 26? Is yeah. It, is it possible to maybe have a sit down conversation with the, so this, this is a very expensive decision based on an ethical decision not to, I understand not having, I understand not having 
people as passengers in municipal equipment, but it's pretty standard practice in all the industry, you know, regardless to well, use. Well, just to be clear, it's not an ethical issue. That's a insurance liability issue. Yeah. But I think, um, but I think using your personal vehicle with mileage um, is pretty well accepted throughout. And like, well, they, they use their personal vehicles when they're by themselves for mileage, but they, they don't want the responsibility on their insurance of four other town employees in it. And so I think, what if, what if we had a conversation with our insurance carrier and see how, and, and so they had a better understanding of the coverage, because that would save tens of thousands of dollars. You know, and it might be a five minute conversation with our, our insurance rep and maybe build some trust and, and that might save the town a lot of money and move forward together towards it. But you know, and, and if they still decide no, they still decide no, but at least we can try to save save that, build the trust and save some money as well. You know, does that seem reasonable or? You're saying see if the insurance could cover town employees in their personal vehicles? Let's just, get a, let's just gather all the information and then let the employees make that decision. You know, and if they say no, they say no. It's their car. They can do what they want. <coughs> if they feel comfortable, then there's an opportunity where maybe we don't have to get a new truck. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. For me, like the new truck discussion, we're going to be having in the in a year. It's going to be happening next year. Next year is when we start planning for the following budget, which is what include which includes the pickup replacement. Right, at this time, 12 months from now. So how many trainings are we going to have in the next 12 months? There's quite a few in the summertime. It's quite a few. Five or... Last year, I think 50. we did 12. 12 days. 12, that uh, five of us were involved, and yeah. uh, they used, you know, there was two or three of them involved, so they took the pickup, but... As a practical matter, um, can we make this decision reasonably within the next two weeks? Yep. And as another practical matter, can we just rent a van? Oh, that's funny. Like, seriously, if we're going to talk it. about, like, spending money, just rent a vehicle for yeah. going to travel together? You can rent my van. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good idea. <coughs> renting? It's a price. I mean, renting a, a van just for van. the times when you need it. I don't you know. know. Where's the van rental place in Williston? Right. You're gonna, so you're going to send two guys down? You're going to pay, down to pay, <laughs> you're gonna pay two good. guys an hour each way to drive down, <laughs> plus the van rental to save yeah, we really don't have $20 in fuel. No, you're saving you know, $12,000 when we're talking about the difference between the truck we have right now and a new truck. Right. A but year it, early. I'm certainly not opposed to having the discussion about replacing that vehicle with a four passenger, four or five passenger vehicle. I'm just not sure that we can do it between now and you know next right. week. Yeah, I mean we have we budgeted forty thousand dollars that we're not spending uh, from the capital um, equipment fund, and so I guess we that, did we budget. Well, uh, I think we, we budgeted to move. An additional forty thousand dollars over to cover the backup purchase, and so that eighty thousand dollar pickup, a new pickup, is what, have you priced what, out of thirty? What forty thousand are we talking about here? So if you look on um, fifty six twenty thirty five thousand, wait, which one? Yeah. Uh, number one here, other revenue on the GHG. yeah, but where's the Duncan saying thirty five thousand? You're saying forty thousand. Well, I just, I didn't do the math, there, I did it in my head. There but was a yeah, plan 35000 but that money, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, that's, that's a money in, money out. Correct. Right. We're not going to bring in $35,000 to create $35,000 of surplus. So, but, well, we did budget. If we don't spend it, it's not just coming in a surplus. Absolutely, but the plan was to expend that money from the capital, bill, uh, capital equipment fund. And even though it's money in, money out, I'm not talking right. about raising or lowering the tax rate. I'm just talking about it's a different piece of equipment. And it, exactly, just putting it towards putting it towards the truck as a down payment, and then figuring out the remaining two year lease payment on that we don't, truck. Or we don't finance foreman truck. We make okay. single payments on it. Always up. Okay, here's the thing. I'm just going to share my screen for a second. We haven't done the highway, the highway reserve 
fun yet, so maybe we're jumping ahead a little maybe. bit. Maybe. Well, well like, that's a, what we're doing right now has an impact on, on line 41 of the budget. Yeah. I get it. I get it, but usually we like spend devoted time on that reserve fund. I look at the same and thing. And then we follow that into the budget. So I feel like we're going a little bit backwards. But, but, yeah, but besides that, for right now, when I look at the reserve fund as it is currently, we are in negative territory in 3031. And I know it feels like a long way away, but it's not really that far away. And the pickup truck, I mean, I don't know if our net is actually going to be $57,000, but the cost of the vehicles have gone up significantly. Um, so I feel like that might be, you know, $12,000 higher or something. But I just want to point out the fact that we're not putting enough in based on the plan spend to get us through the next 10 years. That's that's why I think we should take a good hard look at the overall capital budget and plan. Yeah, we is that a planning commission or is that just you guys? It kind of does tie in with the town plan a little bit, doesn't it, it? You're raising a good point. A capital budget and plan is prepared by the planning commission and submitted to the select board for review and approval. In our capital budget plan is way out of date. It's time. Years, it's years out of date. You know, you have a really active foreman right now who has a different mindset as previous foreman, so it needs to match the goals of the crew right now. Uh, that's a separate issue. The capital budget and plan is, is one thing. This is a plan for purchasing capital for the highway department which is part of our budget, but but in essence, it is part of a capital budget and plan and should match with an overall capital budget plan. But a capital budget plan includes the library, the historical society, the municipal building, um, you know, all of those things. And we don't have that. That's wickedly out of date. Um, and you're you. right, that is prepared by the planning commission. Why it's like that? I can't tell you. I don't personally think it should be like that. I think it should be because so many of those things are related to the town budget. Um, but that, that is the fact of the statute says that those capital budgets and plans are initially prepared by the planning commission and submitted to the select board for review and approval. The only thing I was trying to figure out is just to get some numbers so you, the board could see the goal, you know, not only the goal, but the benefit of trading early. There's, I know I was here when we had the Ford, the Foreman truck. They decided to keep it at the time, the, pre, the board previous decided to keep it a year extra. So we put $5,000 in brakes on it, and then they gave us 16000 less than they were going to give us the year before on trade. I'm not saying trade it, don't trade it. I just want to get some numbers to bring to the meeting. So you could see the benefits, maybe, of trading it in a year early. And for us, not trading it as in the whole truck in, I want to, the plows new, or then the truck, the sander, had just got gone through with all new components that the flood caused it to have to have. So we'd be recycling a lot of the stuff. So the cost, and I talked to the dealership, so the cost from a regular cab like that truck to go to a crew cab like that truck is $2,000. That's all the extra is to go to four motor, to have four doors for the same truck. Maybe we should, if we fight through it, put it in next year's budget. I just, I was just gonna bring some numbers. That's all I wanted to do, just to, for informational. Yeah, we replaced the last truck a year early. That's how Could we you talk about trading. Truck. Like, what's the cost to trade it? Like, just like trade it out right now. I didn't take the truck up to the dealership yet because I wanted to get a feel for after we talked of what the board, you know, would like to do. Just to get it, you know, just for informational purposes mainly, to know is it more valuable or to not, you know, for the future, not keeping the truck as long, you know, a three year rotation or, you know, go into a commercial lease versus a buy kind of thing, just to, just to have the numbers so we can have a more accurate 
knowledge of what we're spending and what. You know. Rose Mary, what's our drop debt to uh, having a budget to you? Twenty nine. Is that the report? The report has to be at the twenty nine twenty nine. But you need, I mean, we need a few we days need, to yeah. proof it. So we have, we have two weeks. Uh, really, it should be the 15th because like we 18th. have to establish the warning has to be voted on at the. So we need a special meeting between the 15th and the 29th, or we need to have the warning and the budget done at the next meeting. Not going to happen. So then we need we a special meeting. Have a special meeting for the Typically, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So outside, read, um, I guess the rest of the board can speak. We're not going to be able to do a pickup this year, just time frame wise, and already numbers don't look awesome overall to me. But I would certainly be willing to discuss it for next year, which would be. That's just me. I, that, that's fine. I just. Other board members. I, I would still appreciate the information. So if you want to go down that road, <coughs> get the information. And I know Tom, if you still want to follow up and see if town insurance can cover um, employees in their own personal vehicles when they're going to do town business, that would be great. Um, yeah. I don't, like I said, I wasn't trying to get it early. I just want to get more accurate numbers because everybody in this room knows that, <laughs> like Beth said, uh, in a few years out, there's not enough money. Uh, so my goal, and me and Tom talk, was to get it so it's more accurate, so we know what trade-ins will be, we know what purchases will be, and we don't, I know sometimes it's tough, but like tobacco, like we had this date in mind that we were going to trade it, so if we push things down the road, then we get three pieces of something then that we're going to, so that's the just, thing that kind of yeah. puts us in a pickle. I don't, right. that's all I'm saying. I, it's just hard to keep an accurate I budget. Think that like, it's really good you're doing the things you're doing. It's really good you're getting the quotes, you're finding the values to bring it to us so that we're informed. That's really good, and I appreciate it. And, like, I, as far as I'm concerned, keep doing it. All right. Additionally, uh, personally, I my vote on the truck and replacement of the truck is, like, think that we're just trying to be careful with money and cash and all those things. Um, so I... I and interest rates are high and 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 right, so just lots of ands. I don't think this budget year is the right year for the truck. Uh, but I do really appreciate understanding that depreciation you're talking about and what values are right now versus what you know they could be in a year. Helpful. Mm. And I, I would make the same suggestion that we did earlier, and that would be to have Tom, Jason, and Evan work on <laughs> Evan. I'm sorry. <laughs> Developing an updated uh, capital budget and plan so that we don't end up at this spot next year at this time. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. I just went through and looked at the contribution. We've gone from 157 to 161, four thousand dollar increase last year, and then we're looking at another four thousand dollar increase this year. And planning on flat in 25 26 if we jump that up twenty thousand dollars and then next year jump it up 10 total of 30 over then and that puts us at two hundred and fifty one thousand it puts our capital plan way out you know so then so, you know just thirty thousand dollars today I'm I suggesting think, that we yeah. don't have this conversation right not, now not I'm, saying, I'm saying that yeah. you guys should talk about this and bring us back a plan but for, yeah. for this year, I guess, is my question, right? Like, like We did this last year and the year before, Tom. That's why you see additional funds going in. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is it's not enough. And I, the clarity I'm asking is, like, do you want this capital plan for two weeks or do you want it for the next year? Next year. Like, we, so, we want you guys to come back with a proposal which is going to address the shortfalls. Least in that's what in I want. two weeks for next, or for next year? No, not for next year. For next not, year. Not I was for, wondering. Not two weeks from now. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for next year. Yeah. Yeah. Over the course of the ensuing year, yeah. develop a plan and bring it back to us. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Next Evan. question on the list. Any. So does that answer your question on capital plan? Correct. Yeah. It does change yeah. again. So that year. that's also going to change the um, the year end number too. 
the estimated year end number because we're not going to bring in as much revenue and we're not going to expense it out on the other line items. No, it's not. Uh, yes. Deal. Does that make sense? Yeah, going through. Is on the reserve building equipment restricted fund capital building expense? Do you want to repair Holcomb, Mill, Hoffman, 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 Hoffman,
do it next year, next fiscal year. It's a tough one. Yeah, it, it is a tough one. And the same, you know, we have ultimately the same question on the old mill house building. Yep. I, I, we, we, did, we did talk with the village once about the concept of us, the town, owning the building and having them pay rent. Ultimately, that, in my mind, is a good solution. But it doesn't fix the immediate problem of how much money we throw at the clock tower to get it fixed. In my mind, that's got to be done. The village has a number of options. I mean, they have they have their own revolving loan fund. They could borrow from that fund from themselves, from themselves, and and pay their costs. They could even borrow from the town's revolving loan fund, right? Uh, I well, anyways, but there's options, I guess. They, yeah, they have some options. Yeah. So I, I think we should put the money in our budget to pay for it and hope that we can get as much money as we can from the village to meet their obligation. And I would say, that, I mean, if, if they can't pony up, then what you described, Tom, would be great to pursue something like that. Um, just I mean, if we can just get an agreement to get it done, right? Yeah. And like, obviously, both sides have to agree. My ultimate goal well, is for one entity to own the buildings leave. outright, but you know. Sorry, Beth. We had, we had a joint meeting on May 10th. In that joint meeting, we talked about repairs at the municipal building. There were back and forth about getting a priority list from the contractors and talking about HVAC and cracks and ceilings and yada yada. Ultimately, um, Ken said the village crew can handle car wash in the building, or not. If not, the town crew is capable is available to help. Plus, work can be different projects with town money. He thinks repair of sheetrock and cracks possibly painting could happen this year. Eric with a K says Bailey says he understands from Nate that first priority would be the tower because of the water damage. BJ moved. If the village agrees to do anything the select board does to improve the municipal building that does not use village money, the motion is seconded and passed. What? So, what was the second part? Of that? BJ's motion that does was, not use village yeah. money. That was the second part of that motion. All right, I was worthless. So, well, we can do whatever we, we want as long as we fund the whole thing. So, the, all right. So, let's say the mill house is worth what? Hundred thousand, right? Like a rough shape. What if we trade paper? So the mill house goes to the town that gives fifty thousand dollars equity to the village. The village then uses that equity to pay for half of the clock tower. The town then owes, owes the village minus the clock tower equity. Boom, fifteen thousand dollars. We can buy the mill house. Maybe, the I don't know what I want. maybe maybe we need an executive session on yeah, that's potential too big property. A, yeah, that, that's there's a larger big conversation. A conversation to hammer it out right now. <laughs> Would any of this have to be put to a vote of the voters? Uh, if any property was yeah, sold, the voters need to approve it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Special meeting or town meeting, or special town meeting or town meeting. If there's a transfer of property, that's the voters' property. They have to and if we're doing that, we might as well just go for the full merger. You know. All right. Or so, divorce. Uh, Beth, or divorce. I think we're getting <laughs> a little bit sidetracked. Do you? Yeah, I can't interrupt you. Also. So I, your I'm question sure. about capital expense, Tom, was. That answered for FY24. Uh, I, I am leaving the proposed next year at 30000 and I'm leaving this year at 30000 assuming we will spend it on something, whether it's the Holcomb House, Mill House, Highway Garage. There's maintenance that needs to be done. Does that seem fair? I, I didn't. That's perfect. That's, that's the high-level budget thing that we and, needed to answer. And I'm today. not going to put – I was only going to put thirty on the expense side, so we'll, well, that'll leave a fifty. It'll equal exactly. Equal so it's a, it's a net zero. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, so I did not specify that in the notes. I'm good with that. So bridge reserve fund um, and bridges contracted services. Your question is, do you want to match the expenses for Scribner bridge expenses? Have ah. a meeting in two days. To discuss this grant in details or obligation. I have no understanding of Scribner bridge. I know that you guys allotted X number of thousand dollars to do some work or engineering studies. Is that right? And so I'm meeting Thursday to go over that. Mark, study. Mark was our representative <coughs> of that scoping study of a scoping study that LCPC promised would bring back more results than the one from 2010. That was scoped. 
Yeah. We scoped the scope. <laughs> so we did. Like, do you want to match the expenses for Scribner Bridge? Yeah, the Scribner Bridge expense for the scoping study, which is only our. There was a grant for a portion of that. Correct. Yes. Which was our matching yeah. funds for that need to go on bridges, contracts, and services. Correct me if I'm wrong. Here. Yeah, I honestly don't have a clue what that number is or well, it, it's proposed to be. If you look at the budget, it's been flat at fifteen thousand. You know, from last year to this year, and and I just, I, I didn't know what your plans were. Whether you were planning on doing a reconstruction, or you're planning bigger, or is it just like, are we just going to do the bare minimum for the match that grant plus? You know, I didn't well, have no idea. It's the, not actually anything to the bridge. It's it's related to it's the fund. It's a study. Yeah, it's a study for updating. It's an engineering study, right? For updating the plan so that we could potentially go for a grant. And so we're adding fifteen thousand dollars to the bridge fund, which like is gonna which is used for like all bridges. And I guess so the question then is do I add additional for that? Because it might mean more money because we're doing a special thing with Scribner Bridge, right? Or is that bridge fund really only for Scribner Bridge right now? It's for all that bridges and culverts. Yeah, so that's why I was I guess that was the question is like we it was fifteen thousand dollars last year, we spent nothing. So this is money that we're just adding to the bridge fund. But we didn't bring it in either. either. Do you um, want me to keep it at fifteen plus the additional match for the grant for Scribner Bridge? That's the clarifying question. Excuse me, can I speak? Yes. It's money it's money in, money out. Those two line items are zeroing out, which implies to me that we got grant money in for them. But where is the expense? I understand we have an expense against it, but we've allocated it in the budget. So I feel what you're saying, but I don't think that we should just put $15,000 revenue and $15,000 expense in a budget line year over year unless we know that there is a study expense for the next year. And that's for the support of study itself. So, Beth, so um, I think the question becomes to LCPC, where are we on this? When is it ending? So that we can actually do engineering work. So, Beth, I want to clarify that it's not actually money in, money out. That this is just, this is money being set into a reserve fund for future expenditures, not for a budgeted expenditure. So this year in fiscal year 20... This year in fiscal year, but this year for the bridge fund expense, we have zero dollars. We weren't planning on spending anything out of that fund. We were just putting money in, saving for future projects. And so my question is, we budgeted $15,000 to spend in, to, to save for future projects. Do you want me to increase that to match the grant that I'm going to talk about on Thursday? So keeping 15000 and say it's a five thousand dollar match. Can I up it to twenty? So that way we're not reducing that bridge fund for for the purposes of that grant. Because if you look at fifty line fifty eight forty five forty five fifty five dot zero zero, this is in the highway. We weren't that's planning zero. on spending anything out of that bridge fund this year. Well, that's that's not spending money out of the bridge fund. That is funding the bridge it's fund. That's raising money for the bridge fund. So yeah. this, but, but I'm looking at 50-8. 50 50-8. 50 I'm not looking at 50-6. 50-6 raises money for the bridge fund. 50-8 is expenditure only. Is that, is that correct, Rosemary? All highways expenditures? 50-8. 50 50-6 is money coming in from the Yeah, 50-6. 50, 50 50 50 is, is, is expenditures, correct. 50-8. Funds the Bridge and Coal Reserve Fund, correct, Rosemary? Yes. That's where we put money into the fund. So, so we put none in. So we put nothing into the fund. So that fifty six is money that we're spending coming, out. Coming out of the coming out. Pulling out. Okay. okay. So with that said, that fifteen thousand dollars is just for Scribner Bridge Grant. You're talking bridge contracts and services, right? Yes. The expense line. Gotcha. So, okay. Right. Is that going to, is that just for that project or is there something else happening? Because I asked Tom about that when we were talking about the budget because uh, Railroad Street Bridge, I know the repairs 
of the guardrail are going to be, I would say, FEMA reimbursed. But the sidewalk area and stuff from the salt usage of the sidewalk, <coughs> the, the paint's all peeling off and it's got some pretty good rust starting. So we were talking about having, you know, Eric, services done Eric, to certain bridges. Eric, uh, Osgood reminded me. And, and hopefully it's been verified that when the state did that bridge on the historic bridge program, they are responsible for all maintenance on that <coughs> bridge, including painting. The only thing the town is ultimately responsible for, I believe, is clearing brush away from the abutments. Um, and there might be one or two other pretty minor things. But other than that, the state is supposed to do all of the maintenance on the railroad street mm -hmm. bridge, including paying. All right. Bridge somewhere, we've got a bridge agreement that says that. Yeah, it's in the letter record. Rosemary, or I guess Sue and I, maybe? So for now, unless there's other bridge expected work, I am comfortable with keeping 15 coming in, 15 going out expected. Because our bridge and culvert reserve fund balance is what, Rosemary? Is it on here? No. Is it on here? The Dakota Reserve is 97265 as of your yeah. right. January, so, June 30th. So potentially we could be drawing that down to 92, which isn't ideal. But given everything else increasing this year, I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, what I, what I don't know is, and maybe Mark knows, um, because he was involved in that study. Mark, can you think of things that are going to come up as a result of that study that we will have to pay for? I don't think, I, nothing comes to mind. I know we put plywood on it. Or if I don't remember. I know we, yeah, we put plywood on there because the, uh, Rob from one of my planning commission said that the, there was how the grant was structured. It was going to eventually cover the bridge work of the, I'm not no, knowing if they're termites, but there's something in there eating the, one of the wood beams. It's not a structure, you know, from the structure, it's a side piece, but it said it was going to eventually take care of that, but it would be a few years down the road, he said, is what he told me and Ryan when we were over there it up with the plywood. We didn't replace the boards because of that reason. And it's hard to find barn boards of that yeah. work. Well, it sounds like why don't I get through Thursday's meeting and come back to the board with better numbers. Yeah, it's going to be a lot higher. We might have to do something different. But I think at the end of the day, it is money on money out. So if we don't spend it, we don't bring it in. Right. So, yeah. Your next question is, is Justin part of salaries and carry contracted services here? I believe that's correct. Duncan? I also believe that's correct. Shane? I I don't believe that's correct. Shane? Can we have Rosemary, please? Yes, it is. I've not done this before, so. Thank you, Rosemary. I thought she would have yelled at me if I was wrong. Emergency okay. services, can you push for those final numbers? Yeah, they were supposed to, I think after the first of the year, they were going to set <coughs> the grand list. Is it, they said the values come from. Sheriff's right. Department. Yeah, the communication. And then uh, Village has to set the fire, and they haven't, RJ hasn't put together his budget yet. Yeah, RJ's working on the budget. That's what he's in. Oh, so he'll work. probably have it Monday. Yeah. So we'll probably have, all, by, by next Monday, we should have all those numbers put to. Um, Does the board want to budget class four road, class four labor now to start tracking it for FY26? So do you guys want to put it in the budget this year or just leave it as salaries and then let Jason track it and then next year we'll have better numbers? 
we're going to reduce out. We're going to reduce it from one line and add it to another. So right. It's, it's no going to be <coughs> money either way. Is there a way? For I don't it? understand why we use the budget to do that. That's in the budget. It's already aligned. Yeah, but I still don't. That doesn't. Sorry, but that doesn't make it right in my mind. Why would we use the budget for this? I I would advocate that we do something with the timesheet that allows Jason to apply class four labor. Any anything that he spends on class four labor and assign it to that budget category so that we then can have a better idea of what our budgeted number should be going forward. What is that salary? I didn't hear what you said. It would be salaries and it, you know, it could be things like, you know, we have a line item in there for culverts. Um, uh, you know, class four maintenance materials like items. And the only reason that I think we should do that is because now there is a requirement under the municipal general roads permit that we do certain labor on class four highways. Yeah, so anything a foot or greater of gall erosion we have to address. My bring to this meeting about this was just the other day in the flood it happened. Sinclair Road, I went up with the backhoe. They had a problem. There was a snow bank in the way. They couldn't move it, so I went up with the backhoe to move it. It didn't have a one foot erosion, but it saved because it was going to have, it was already at like four inches. <coughs> so I know it's always been the board's thing in the past that we don't do any work on class fours. I think we got to start doing some on the ones that are being lived on, especially because it's going to save money. If we're, you know, if we're out cleaning culvert out, you know, Storm wise, pre storm, like I would just like, I was just going to track it as of the first of the year. We and Tom talked about it just to try to get a feel for, you know, a year's time to see what we, the actual cost would be. And is it a savings, a huge savings, like I think it's going to be. Because if we keep letting all the class fours erode as fast as they're eroding to a one foot thing and I'm using all the material and time to fix them, preventative stuff, like I do. On everything else that it saves would save. I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think we have to be really careful about that because we do have a class four road policy, and that policy is pretty clear. I, that's why um, I'm asking. Yeah, it may be that that policy gets adjusted or changed, uh, and if that's the case, then that's what we do. But right now, I'd be very cautious personally about spending a lot of money on class four roads that are not specifically required through the municipal general roads permit or it's the replacement of a bridge or culvert on a class four highway um that's that's just me what's your thought about reviewing class fours and changing uh reclassifying to legal trails and then there was no responsibility to towns before the municipal general roads permit now there is and so, like, now that we agreed to this permit, we also agreed to that work. And so what was a class four could have grown trees, and it didn't matter. But now, since, what was that, 2018, in the municipal permit, we now have a responsibility that we never had before. And it's an unfunded mandate. Right. And so right. maybe it's time to reclassify as legal trails and change the legal trail policy to match the old class four policy so that way you're not legally required to do the work, but you're still performing the same service prior to the permit. So I need to interrupt. I need to interrupt because we are talking about all kinds of things that are not about the budget. If we want to have these discussions, we need to have them as their own line item in about in an agenda and dig into them. Period. Like, like I hear you, Tom. You make really good points. I hear you, Jason. You're making really good points. This is not going to help us finish the budget. Right now, we're talking about class four 
road labor and whether we separate it out from salaries and benefits. And I'd like to get back to that specific topic. So again, I don't understand the value of breaking that out of salaries because I feel like when we're talking about salaries, we should be talking about total salaries. And if our time tracking methods aren't working because they're paper, we should solve for that issue because our total time that results in highway salaries should be in highway salaries. And if we want to break down the data, the hours, again, the type of hours and where they're worked and how they're worked and blah, 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 we should have a mechanism to do that. And it shouldn't, in my view, it should not be a class four road budget item. It should be that salary is in the salary line and that any other breakdown of the types of work performed, we are tracking, using the same tool, by the way, the same time cards, we're tracking it in a way that allows us to break down the types of work in a separate report. That's not what a budget is for. I might have confused Tom when we were talking about the class four a little bit, maybe. I'm not sure. My thing is every board member ever asks for an accurate budget. I'm trying to produce one on the highway side for you. I brought up the class four things for over a year now. The 2500 is not enough. If it takes $5,000 for Mines Road, for example, to fix it up and get the, rid of the one foot wash, it's all the way down the center of it from top to bottom. Or I could spend $1,000. I don't know. I'm just frustrated. I apologize. Just so you know, we're not talking about the tax maintenance right now. We're just talking about the line item around the for, uh, for labor. labor. Do you think tax for labor? I believe. You can cut me off, but I think Beth's supportive of tracking in the timesheet. But, you know, like one hour of any any employee's time is one hour of any employee's time, and that's already in, encompassed in highway salaries and benefits for you guys. Yeah. So I think Beth is supportive of tracking it, but not so pulling it out of one line item in the budget and putting it here, because there should be a breakdown behind the scenes of, of all your hours for different projects. Is that what you meant when we talked about it? Um, about what what it? No, not you, Beth. Sorry, I was talking to Tom when we talked um, about it. Maybe I'm so on your... It, it's a line in the budget, and it's something you and I talked about, and it's an easy correction in the payroll software to just break out hours, 35 out of salaries, and then five out of class four labor. It's still going to pull Fetty Micah in retirement, not the same, but it just would track it to that account. And if you want to do that, that's something that can happen um, in fiscal year 25 or not. But it sounds like it's not. And that's, that's okay. It's just that's the decision that needed to happen, and then we can just. I'm just not supportive of it. I don't yeah. know how everybody else feels. I, I'm sorry. I, are you saying you're not supportive of tracking it, Beth? Is that what you're. I'm saying I'm not supportive of having labor. As a separate line in the budget. Oh, okay. It complicates the budget unnecessarily. Yeah, okay. I, I agree with you there. Of, of tracking the class four work outside the budget. Okay, then I, I, I agree. Yeah, track it. We don't need to have it as a separate line in the budget. I did want to ask, and I risk running the wrath of Beth, but um, has have you, Jason, read the uh, proposed changes to the Class 4 roads policy um, from the Planning Commission? They're now almost two years old, so it's I've, I've uh, no no fault on you if you have. I've read them as far as what they went around and took in for information and what their their goals are. And I'm okay. And have you seen the list, the proposed list of um, Class 4 road changes to trails? I have, and you I'm have. supportive of doing okay. a lot of them. Um, Tom, if you could potentially bury or unbury those, rather, and send them around, um, I think it would be nice for us to have that discussion after we're done with the budget. But. I Perfect. agree. I was, just to clarify, because I might have, me and Tom might have been <laughs> the same idea, but I didn't realize he was talking about tracking it. A different line in the budget. I just wanted to track the hours so we knew 
like on a timesheet wise, like if we spent 150 hours in a year's time on class four rows kind of thing is what I was, my goal was, was what I was okay. thinking. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. That's I great. mean, and then can we just make that, take that account away from the budget? Like, cause it's, it's there. We look at it every year. Can we just delete it and get rid of these unused lines? I prefer it to be there, honestly. Um, I think it's good to be able to, to see it in a budget and to be able to plan for it. And I, I think class four roads are different than all other roads and any labor that we spend on class four roads is different than any labor we spend on class three and above. Yeah. Um, I, I agree and follow up had that been taken had there been a different view, I would have followed up with, should we also track labor on public works projects outside of those class two and three road maintenance? Kind of on that same mindset that it's totally different. But so then you're adding another line, and then you could also argue that you need to yet add yet another line for labor against grant. And then you could probably argue that you'd add labor for public works against grant. And then you could probably argue that you'd add labor for, I don't know, winter roads. But then you add labor for summer roads. Don't we? It's how they used to do it. That's what we do now. No, that's how your time card is now. But it's not. There's no. There's no salaries for winter. Oh, salaries, salaries for summer. There's one line. Budget. One line. The last two years, I've been talking about redoing the time cards, but well, we, I have we letting have that to. horse die. Yeah. No, it's good. it has to it has to get done for the for FEMA right off here. So. But, I think but the tool for tracking that stuff is not line items in the budget, it's the accounting software in the back end and time cards. So if we, if we do that, if we establish a time card that tracks the hours spent on class four roads, I guess I'm okay with pulling that. Oh, pulling in, the line in a way that's button. usable. I mean, that's the thing. It's like on a piece of paper, I'm not going through 52 time cards. Yeah. Deal. Got. Got. <laughs> huh? Different pay type. Pay code. Yeah. Pay yeah. Type. Yeah. yeah. Pay type. Yeah. Budget. Yeah. The only good thing about doing like the FEMA stuff, when we have an event, it just it would be nice to get this stuff in place because obviously where these floods aren't happening every ten years anymore; they're happening every four months. It seems like it would just be nice to have eventually something where it's easier for us to track the information that they need because this last time. I learned a lot. I bet everybody else did <laughs> what FEMA requires. Yeah, I would say work on work on changes to the time sheet as needed. Next question. Tree and brush removal and invasive species management. I think there's a wish to combine those two items, keeping the same amount of money, but just rolling it up under tree and brush removal. Uh, what are the board's thoughts? Jason, any input you want to throw out there for it? Yeah, it shows us a little over budget on the mowing. I mean, it was 63, you didn't change. But we, the tractor gets rented that time of year for invasive species. I like, guess why we're out there with it that time of year. Like we do the wild parsnip. We're out there taking care of the knotweed before it gets to seed. The ash trees that we can chop with it. Um, so it actually looks like nothing's getting budget or billed to that it, account anyway. It, it, that's how it's been the last three years yeah. uh, because of the way previously things were done. I would just like to combine them and I I thought it saved a little bit, but yeah, you combine the two. So if there's been no if three years of no activity, that line can be yeah. actually eliminated, right? The only good thing about doing what I suggested is now we can do a three-week rental. So you're renting it for three consistent volume. weeks, saving money on the way the two lines are, and having it for an extra week. Is there anything grant-wise, Tom? That I mean, is there something magic about the term invasive species management? That, uh, I mean, there's something very magic about the term. I just don't know that it equates to tracking. Any, any, <laughs> any, anything in reality? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I'm perfectly fine with combining those two categories. Yeah, I am too. And I mean, simply just eliminating the no. the line item for invasive. I, and we'd be saving some. And we'd be saving some money. Rolling the money we talked about too by having three weeks of a heavy duty um, articulating mower. You could it does six inches and down. Eventually, you're going to get all your roads caught up. And that the town, the long-term plan would be then you could buy, with, we already have the equipment, you'd just be buying a, a light or medium duty mower because you're mowing, you've caught yourself up. And that, that line would actually reduce down even more um, as you, once you get caught up on. So, so then, you know, the, that was the idea is like, how do we like plan savings for the future? And this is, this was the thought. I'd like to think you're right about that, but Vermont tends to grow stuff really good. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it'll get caught up. I'd like to. Yeah. Like and to things sense. change. You know, we have a mower that we have to ditch. And the mower doesn't reach the other side of the ditch, so we have to spend about ten thousand dollars a year renting one. Well, that's that was the thought. As we buy it for twenty thousand, you can buy a light duty articulating mower. That's the same reach as a heavy duty one. It just only does like two inches and in down versus six inches and in down. So once you once you get caught up, trees don't grow six inches over over the course of a year. And forty miles of road would only take you two weeks to, to mow the all forty miles. So you'd be saving that in two years you'd be paying for that mower. And that ditch bank mower um, is, is beat up. You you know. Know. Yeah. I'm all for combining the two also. I would just want to make sure that there's something about invasive species in the combined line because I think that there's a danger of that getting lost over time. I think we could add it, Tom, could we? Change the name? Yeah, just try to combine the two to... Add the word invasive to Maui, invasive Maui. Right, I like it. Invasive species, yeah. Is that going in the Brush species. <laughs> All right, I think, I think we have the answer here. Uh, to keep us on track, your next question is about paving blacktop maintenance. Is that money that we hold over anyways, Rosemary? Or do we typically we do the paving one, not the maintenance. So you don't hold over the maintenance, you just hold over the paving. Mm -hmm. So that's a motion that you're asking for. <coughs> to, like it, it's not correct. We can't put it in a reserve fund. Or we maybe don't we have could, a reserve fund. We don't, don't have, have a, a we don't even fund. have a paving reserve fund. If we yeah. put it in a reserve fund we'd put it in you we can motion to hold over the funds. Basically. That's the only thing I was wondering because there's some projects around town, some roads that don't require <laughs> the amount of money. You don't. It's a smaller outfit that we can bring in. So it's instead of like when we did the library, the parking lot and stuff that was out of this. Yep. So it was. Uh, I was just thinking if we could roll them over like we're been doing like with the guardrails and stuff, we can get more done cheaper. Because any contractor likes to do more work. Because you don't have to mobilize yeah. multiple times. So you guys but don't have a retreatment fund? No. No. We, we, just, fund. we just hold cash. Can we put it on the article in two weeks to create one? We have so many of them, I'll drown <laughs> more of them. But, I, I mean, like you're talking about with the guardrails, right? So that's... What do you do with the guardrails? You call them and arrange it at the end of a fiscal year, beginning of a fiscal year, right? And just spend well, the money. Could we just do the same here and not even need to worry about the motion and move on? Well, the issue is we may not actually have a surplus at the end of the fiscal year 24. Uh, we certainly may not. It might be real tight. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I guess I can't vote to commit 12000 to the year-end surplus right now, not knowing whether we're going to have it or not. I wasn't voting to do it. Yeah, I, was, I, I was just asking Jason, sticking with his model, you know, because then you would span both years, right? Could you remind us about this in June? Because I'm more than happy, like, if we know what the numbers look like in June, I'm more than happy to make some sort of a motion yeah. like that. Doing it right now in January gives me a little bit of angst. So I guess open to the idea, but not tonight from where I sit. Is that cool? It's fine. Any other questions on that topic? Your next one's a statement. Your next one's a statement. That's cool.
Culverts are reduced by 10,000. Expenditure for grant, blah, blah, blah. That's just a statement, right? And yep. at Culvert, do you want to know why? Anyone want to know why? Or yeah. I'm, I'm interested. All right. So if you remember, we raised it up to 17,000 because we were pre-buying a bunch at once. All of that works good. It's very hard when it comes to the grant side because the grants want the receipts and the canceled checks for everything that we're buying. And when we buy it a year before, the prices are different. Mm -hmm. So there's been questions raised from the grants when we're doing them. Why, you know, why? So that was the plan was to cut it down to 10,000. So we have a stock, pretty good stock, you know, what I, we keep down there. And we're gonna buy the culverts for the grant at the time of the grant through the previous question about hopefully using uh, construction project capital as the grant stuff. So it's very easy for Tom, myself, I don't know if that's smear or sue about uh, when we have to have oh. cancel checks. That's going to be just the stuff. Somebody we is use. clicking a pen and I can't hear over the clip. And it's just going to be Rosemary. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah, just going to be for grant stuff, as in the better back roads, grants and aid, stuff like that. So, if they do an audit on us, like they might at some point, who knows? We have the information very. Easily, because right now, this last calm started, we had to find some stuff because the previous town administrator didn't finish the grant like we thought. So we had to go back through files that got wet and find certain information because it wasn't easy to look up. So that's our only goal is to make things more easy. Let's work smarter, not harder. I like it. We're not dealing with supply chain problems the same as we were. Yeah, the last couple of years. This I think it number be five. Easy. Uh, the piece that I think that's important with that too is that we were that line was also reduced um, as well as the revenue was reduced because we had we had a grant for twenty eight thousand we were expecting for the grants and aid, but because we didn't we weren't a, it wasn't a granted yet it was awarded it was removed which meant that five. The twenty percent expenditure was also taken out of that line, so those those both might jump up next year. Gotcha. I think your next question ties into my previous comment. Good enough. So buy the York break and two invoices at, uh, at the end of the fiscal yeah, year. Yeah, sounds like. Didn't we just put seventeen hundred dollars into that York break? Like this is a different setup. So we need a new one now? It's not the same. Style. It's just something to... It's what? It's a different style of York break. So it can be, there can be more than one at the time out there. So purchasing additional equipment. Additional equipment. Yeah, let's look and see what the numbers look like in June. Shouldn't we, if we're going to, shouldn't that be included in the overall capital plan if we're going to probably well, well yeah we can do the, include both this one and the previous how much do you one. want involved in that last time i touched it you and i worked together 18 months 24 months ago and then it went to brian and i, I think we thought maybe the dump trailer should be in it because that costs almost twenty thousand dollars it's only going to be more and the rest of the board at that time, or maybe it got lost I just somewhere in between you and I and the boards. And it's a $9,000 <laughs> total expenditure. The York rate is. Do you want that in in the capital equipment plan? Yeah, if it's more than five, is there's that, a definition of what a capital purchase have is. A, it's 5000 or more. We have the hydro feeder for $9,000, so we have other $9,000 so items. maybe our guts were right. Good to know. I'll mark that down for my homework assignment. I, I think it should be in there. I mean, if it's Anything? in, especially if you're going to plan on replacing it on some sort of regular basis, still, yeah. we should work it into the total. Anything so, over five. So the small purchase for, for the budget should have just... Sounds like it's not the time. This isn't the year to budget for buying it. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and so for the budget for next year, 
Just keep it at four thousand. Got it. Yeah, the the that that category that category really is for you know small tools and equipment like you know things under five thousand bucks. Like we bought the pressure washer with it. Yes, that that would be a you know in you know grinders and. Uh, you know, t new torch sets and things like that. It would be those kinds of small tools and equipment. If it's if it's larger capital equipment, that's I believe the threshold for that was five thousand bucks and above. I like it. That's very good for homework. It's also very helpful. No, you don't need that in two weeks. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> that's part of the overall plan. Um. And the last one's a question. What projects are planned for Public Works? To yeah. assist with in 25? Oh, yes. <laughs> so are we the... doing the swimming pool this year? <laughs> the skating rink. I wouldn't mind building a dam and making a lake. Well, every year there's this, like, the recreation mowing and the non-highway projects. And it seems like the highway crew gets moved around a lot to use kind of back to the labor accounting but now it's like saying that in other materials like how much material did you put into the arboretum and, and did that just come out of their gravel line or is that coming out of the non-highway project you know and that's like my question is like that was me being resourceful and recycling a product oh, there you go <laughs> you know and so it's like if there's any big projects that these other groups are, that are now being utilized like do you guys know of any other big projects? If the answer is no, we leave it at fifteen hundred. If it's yes, then let's figure out what it is. That involves them. I I'd love to see a road right down into the arboretum. How much is that going to cost? Honestly, you need to look at that survey before you talk roads. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, since we switched from the committees coming to the board and asking for assistance from Public Works to so them just going directly to Jason. I don't have a clue. I would assume you would have a much better idea than me because I'm out of the loop. So. I think. But that wouldn't be in the project line anyway. No, but the question's coming to us. And I guess I'm putting it back saying, what are they? Yeah. I hear you, but I think when it comes to like the cost of it for the budget, that mostly is labor. So the, you're right. The question does go <coughs> to the material cost. They shouldn't go against, in theory, they shouldn't go against highlight budget material. Agreed. So, but if we don't, if anyone, nobody has any ideas, then we just leave it at 1500 and, and then we're done with that question. I mean, a non highway project would be like. Uh, like the picnic bench, you know, when you put that in, those kind of things. Well, I'll say something needed to happen. That's another thing that you should probably have a line item in your in your timesheets. Man, you're sounding like to me the last with? two years. I you? said that. I said that last <laughs> you year. Did. I, I think they should be. Credited. You did. I think we should be able to see that. The the other thing, just from a history standpoint, the reason recreational field mowing is in here is because the highway department used that used to be part of their budget. They used. They used a, a town piece of equipment and mower, and was Mary Jane actually hired as a highway employee to do that, a part-time highway employee to do that? So that the, the uh, town actually used to mow Old Mill Park, and then we switched to uh, you know, contracted uh, uh, services. So it's still in there. It's a little bit archaic. And, well, you know, that's easy enough. Yeah. I mean, it really probably should be under recreation. As a field mowing thing, not on the highway. So that answers your questions, right? <laughs> so I think with all that said, what are the blue highlighted items? Blue highlighted are most of them are uh, ones that are tied from the spreadsheet. So I just want to, before the budget's finalized and voted on, I want to go through and make sure all the formulas are right, everything looks good. So blue is me. I need to check on. Uh, green. No, blue is flex board. You said yellow is you. Other way around. I, I misspoke. I guess. So blue is me to run through and just check on things to see what's what. You know, like the municipal roads general permit. Like how much is that annually? 
we've budgeted five hundred dollars, but my memory says it's thirteen fifty. I just need to go get a, get a hold, you know, figure out what that is and look into it and make sure it's right. You know, a lot of those are tied to our other spreadsheets. And what so are I, green? Green or rosemary's, <laughs> with the exception of the change, percent change, but all the rest are. Um, the only other section of the budget we haven't completely finalized is the skate park, and that's because of uh, we still are working to pull out where the reserves are going to come from to pay for that half pipe. Uh, the expense is in, but the revenue is. Um, <coughs> I put numbers in there, but they're not tied up. So, I mean, just because I'm anal sometimes, like yeah. the emergency services you have is yellow. Actually, I'm looking at that as a select board issue, but it's something that you need to follow up on. Look what I did today. I changed Wonderful. this blue already before I even got to it. So for the A&R pilot lane, we just need to use the 23000 or 24000 yep. So I, I updated everything except for, so that's actually been made. I updated the number and made it white. Um, but what I, number? The, to the twenty eight thousand, the fiscal, the final for the, the amount actually. Let me get up there. Uh, pilot lane. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, I changed it. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. So I put I put it in as twenty five thousand eight hundred ten dollars and thirty cents, and then I took away the highlighted portion because it, we're done with it. Um, the part that I now have is blue is the 460000 for the buildings, but sounds like we're going to have an update on that pretty soon, too. Yeah, I'm not sure. But going back to the proposed, the proposed amount is going to be until we get I thought the pilot you confirmed was in... Um, it was, okay. The, the A&R pilot confirmed is that, yes, that money will be there. It's not that the money is the exact dollar amount we got this year. It's so, that the expectation is that we get the money. What amount would so, you like to put in there? 23. Right. I'd go 24. All right, 23 and a half. <laughs> 20, have, 24 it is. <laughs> I would support 24. I mean... I just think we should be under the 25 eight that we got. Yeah. Eight. It's probably not going to be a lot less, but it's one area that is really, you know, it really depends on what the legislature. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing for Rich Westman to say the money's, it's a very popular program and everything. It's another thing. I, I've never see seen it go down in my 10 years, you know, of, but. Well, I've been doing it 26 and I have seen it go down in that yeah. period of time. Um, man, Duncan, you're old. I, I did it for Texas. <laughs> man, I'm not. Yes, that's like my age. Yeah, but I know. I you're not enough to be my son. I'm Ah, I had another question. I can't remember what it was. Um, so, Tom, just on, um, you know, you had a blue highlighted item online. 404 and 405, um, those blue highlights are the numbers in from the capital reserve, but you are going to need to adjust the numbers on the estimated finals to reduce the, um, I, no, actually just probably just line 404, to reduce it for principal. And then the interest line item estimated year end, you'll also need to reduce the interest amount for the backup because we're not actually bringing that money in. Yeah, the notes I have are highways reserved, no additional, uh, no expense, meaning for fiscal year 24 or 25. And then I need to change the interest in principle appropriately. Yep. Yep. In, in all, yeah, I, I might have missed what you said, but the revenue in from the reserve fund would also be re reduced by That's right. There's three interest. three lines to right. do. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, sounds good. One in, two out. Yep.
So any other big questions on the budget here? The big question I have on the budget is how are we going to show ARPA? I believe you wanted to talk with Rosemary about that, right? Yeah. Because we did mention it, and I did remember that that was a big question. Yeah. I mean, we, in my opinion, we need to show ARPA coming in to the budget so that it ends up as part of the general fund surplus at the end of the year. Probably needs its own revenue line, and it's maybe even in its own expense. Maybe yeah, not. Even expense, if you just do it with two more, I mean, whatever is the simplest way to do it, I'm fine with. It might, Rosemary, would it be easier if you actually cut a check now for 50000 to the, uh, whatever they are, the union yes. district, the fiber Which district? Which union? Are they going to be, when are they going to start construction? I have no idea. But would you do me a favor and transfer the entire amount in to the general fund as one movement? Because then when I go in March to close out to report on ARPA, I'm only reporting on one value, the total amount that was transferred in to offset. And then, so rather than ha having to show multiple pieces, it's just done as one piece. And then what you do with the one piece is a check for 50000 the check for okay. the engineering. Yeah. Well, then we should show somewhere as estimated year-end an expense out for 50000 to the Union District. And there's 44000 for engineering, is that right? Or some amount for engineering? So some amount, yeah. forty four five or something like that, yeah, which is I mean, basically if, committed. If there's any, like, res funds that we have, reserve funds that you could, that we could put that into, so that way it's out of the general fund, then our, our surplus would be closer anyways. We well, that's... Yeah, that's what I would propose doing. Yeah. Um, the actual expense to Mumley may actually be expensed out before the end of the current year we're in. But but a big part of the reason for getting that money into a, into the general surplus right now is it gives us the opportunity to say we're going to take X amount of the surplus and apply it to to put it in the grant match fund reserve fund exactly. for example yes yes, yes and yes. we're going to take one hundred and twenty thousand dollars and apply it to an amount to be reduced by taxes and so so that's the, the the other missing piece of the budget right now we need to get rosemary's sheet and make a motion on it right yeah well yeah i mean You've got you've got figures right now for what the year end surplus is. That needs to go in the budget, and then we need to estimate what our actual surplus is going to be added to this surplus, and then based on that, come up with a new proposal for what we're going to reserve or what we're going to propose for reserve reserve funds or right. spending the surplus, applying the, applying the surplus. Yeah. And hopefully that number will net out to zero. I would really like to see the fund coming into the budget in two different buckets. One being ARPA funds coming in, whatever it's called, I don't care. And the other being committed to ARPA funds. Because one needs to go into a general budget and one needs one group is already committed, which includes the CUD and some of the light industrial park funding. Yeah, it sounds like what Duncan wants to do is pay out as much of that as possible that you can, right? Before the whole thing goes into the budget? Uh, after. So it would all come in. You'd like pay out as much to Mumley and the fiber net, and then then we're left with that amount that you can then say, okay, we're going to, and then the, the last piece out is to go to the grant match fund. And that's, that's your motion, right, is to remove this amount of surplus. So. But I'm not, like, I, I'm not... I am worried about the money going out, but I'm also worried about how the money comes in and how we show that revenue into the budget. Because the because the ARPA money coming in isn't all budget allocated ARPA money. It's budget allocated ARPA money and also committed ARPA money. I didn't hear the last. Well, part everything of coming in is ARPA money. You're 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 talking about once well, it's here. We have ARPA money coming in to our operating budget, and we have ARPA money coming in as committed funds. And I'm thinking
thinking about it in terms of like if we think about the revenue that we have, the revenue lines that we have in our budget right now, we have revenue in that's coming in from reserve funds, for example, and revenue in that's coming in from other direct revenue sources, whether it be taxes or donations or whatever, or grant funds for that matter. Like they come in on a different line item. You can easily I don't want to confuse money, is what basically what I'm saying is I want to be really clear about the money that came in to our general fund as being the ARPA money that came into our general fund versus the ARPA money that's coming into our budget that has already been committed before we ever committed anything to our general fund. So you want, yeah, I, I think I understand what you're saying. We I'm want to bring them in as committed funds, but, but we motion to use ARPA money to offset expenses. We use, I think we less motion to use funds. less the committed funds, funds, right? Which is only... We first motion, just well, just to be really clear, we first motion to use ARPA funds on, like, industrial expenses. We secondly motion to use ARPA funds on the BUD. And the third thing we motion months later was a plot to apply ARPA funds to our current budget. Yeah, so I think I'm chronologically I think speaking we should distinguish between the last item and the prior two. Yeah, I, I would agree that chronologically speaking it makes sense to have it at least reflected that some funds were committed before all the rest. I, what I was gonna ask Beth though is it, does it make sense to reflect that on the expenses side instead of the revenue side? Or, I mean, since that money isn't expended yet, does it not make sense? Or? Well, the thing is, I th I'm only, we, yes, we have to allocate it all to expense somewhere. That's not where my concern is. My concern is about revenue in specifically. And, um, like distinguishing, uh, we have a whole bunch of lot. I'm trying to think about how to say this so that it is making the point I'm trying to make. We have a whole bunch of line line items in our revenue, and of those line items in our revenue, some of those line items for revenue go into funding our general uh, our general budget items. Some of those line items within our revenue do not. Some of them are restricted use items. And I'm just saying that bringing in the ARPA funds, some of those ARPA funds are restricted use items. And I think we should have that visibility of those that restricted revenue separately from the visibility of the ARPA funds that will come in to fund our operational budget. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I don't, it doesn't really overly make, I get what she's saying. I don't think it makes much of a difference. I could go either way. I don't think it makes much difference either. I think it would be cleaner and would accomplish Beth's goal if we simply cut a check to the CUD for $50,000 regardless of when they need to spend it. We, we've made a commitment to spend ARPA money, up to 50000 of ARPA money. That gets it out of the amount that's going to come in. I know that makes your life a little more difficult from the sound of things, but it's certainly cleaner in terms of allocating ARPA funds to a specific project. The motion was Duncan moved to apply the unallocated ARPA fund, so I think that's what you have to do. Yeah, and the only two technical allocations there were with the CUD and Mumley. Right. So you, you motion to move unallocated funds into our general fund. So I guess by what's there, those checks need to be cut. And maybe even the motions were made to allocate them. And so maybe that's, that's it. It's done in three parts. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? No. Two years from now, when a taxpayer at town meeting asks the question of this board, of which 
some of us may not be sitting, some of us may, about how did they see where the ARPA funds went? What is our answer? That it was what it was used in three ways. One was to cover the engineering of Mumley and Mumley for two I don't was understand the answer, Tom. But that's not my question. But which, well, which, what she's asking is which budget line will we be able to point to to show people this is I mean, where this money went? It well, won't, actually, it yeah, won't be in a budget line. And it, it wasn't and it was done this way intentionally because of the final rule that we have to follow. So now that the select board is no longer held responsible to the 2024, 2026 deadlines, like that's why you move this is so that you guys now have the freedom to use this money when you need to use it, how you want to use it. And it's no different than a lot of other things that we do. There's a fund set right. up right now Absolutely. and Rosemary will show money going out of that fund for the $50,000 for the CUD um, and the un unallocated balance being applied to the, I mean, it'll be, it'll be an accounting, a fund accounting. Okay, good. Cool. So Rosemary, that will be really explicit in that balance sheet, essentially, that will go in the time report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And that will be But it does beg the question of, um, so I guess you guys can sort sort out <laughs> how to deal with that. But I, gu I guess the motion pretty clearly was the unallocated balance goes into the. Yeah. So it's. And unless we change that. So motion, when I do I my reporting at the ARPA, I'm going to report. If we can get that check cut before, I think it's March, March 31st is when I have to report by. If we can get the check done for CUD, then I can report all unallocated spent, allocated and spent, CUD allocated and spent, mumbly I, I can, I can say it's allocated, but I can say it's not spent. Correct. And then down the road, here's the risk for it's that. It's committed and has to be spent by 26. Th this, this is the big risk about that one. The engineering might not equal 44,000, it might be less. And the final rule was pretty explicit that if you, it's not forty-four thousand, you allocated forty-four thousand for this project, and they spent thirty-six, that money might have to go back to the feds. So we might need an additional motion or something about that. I, I maybe I should check in with Katie Buckley in the next two weeks because we might want to change that so that way to, we move all the ARPA money in, and then have in the in the fund accounting, we know forty-four thousand of it goes to Mumley. But that way, if only 36 goes, that additional eight is ours to do what we want rather than having to go back to the feds. So that's that's something that we need to sort out quickly before March. I think it's March 31st. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll I get totally it hear you. Um, I'd be very surprised if we don't spend the full amount with Mumley. But <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but you never know. It'd be nice if we don't. But. So does that, and then you know ultimately the other the other piece that we normally would know at some point is what we potentially have. I mean, what you've got in here is really great in terms of the total impact on the budget. The total total budget isn't up much, but the total amount to be raised by taxes is up over ten percent. Wow. Yeah, well, that hurts, and that's so we need to figure out how much of the surplus we can apply. To reduce taxes. That's the big one. Yeah. yeah. Right. And in all fairness, um, it is up over 10% over last year's proposed budget, which doesn't incorporate the $50,000 article for CEDC. It does, actually. Well, no, it doesn't. You're right. Not in this. You're so right. yeah. it, I think we're looking better than we were a little weeks yeah, maybe ago. Maybe we need to think about that in terms of what that percentage is because if you look at the FY estimated final that 2134869 that does incorporate the 50,000 raise yeah but the budget does not the budget figure does not here it's so you're right But I, I suspect, you know, just looking at Rosemary's sheet, 
I think we're going to have certainly some amount of money that we can apply to reduce taxes, whether it's 100000 or 120000 I don't know, but I think we well, will I have some money don't to apply. do we have 166? We have 100, and as of this report, if we, if we vote to apply everything that we proposed in the, in the town report, um, yeah. we would have 162, 162 available. 162, 479. We're not going to be able to allocate all that to reducing taxes. So, I mean, it might be that we allocate 100 or 120,000 to reduce taxes, okay. which would get us down to, you know, 4 and a half, 5%. Uh, total increase, which you know, I'd be pretty happy with um, personally, but much easier to stomach. It's easier to explain, too. <laughs> Certainly, <laughs> that. Yeah. <coughs> Are we all answered on our budget questions tonight? Ready to go into executive session? Want to go in a deeper dive in any portions of it? Beth? What? You sound like a robot. She's good. She's good. Oh. I'm ready to move on. Tom, if there's anything I can do to help you with the surplus stuff, yeah. let me know. I'm happy to. I'd love to sit down and go over how things transfer to the tax rate. It's different than I. And I'd love, you know, just like 10 minutes, just like you did with it with Evan. Um, Perfect. Be totally happy to do it. If, if the rest of the board is okay with me doing that, I'm more than happy to do that with Tom. More than happy to have you do that with Tom. Hang on. Is our grand list going to shrink next year? Probably. So we're looking at okay. more than 4.5%. Yep, ready to move on now. So if we're ready to move into executive session, the first thing I want to ask before a motion is Evan, what is the Make sure that your audio is connected when we get into uh, executive session. And it was before. I will set up the waiting room and push out to not access television. Hello. Um, <coughs> the are not part of the flex board. Um, and I'll let you give me the green light when we can begin speaking. So, without further ado, do we have a um, motion to go to executive session and please note who you're inviting. Remember the vote law and everything? It's to executive session, by the way, for the same. It's 313A. Right. A3. Um, so I'll make a motion that we go into executive session for employment evaluation under 1 BSA 313A3. Um, and this is inviting. Jason? Rosemary and Tom for sure. Okay. I is it think, I don't know. It was well, well we have two different ones, know. so I'm not sure well, which we one. We should invite Jason to the first one. All right, okay, there you go. so I'm inviting Jason to join us. And Tom. Right? Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 